Good day, it's Joshua coming to you again. It's Tuesday, I believe February the 3rd, somewhere around there, coming from Port Coquitlam, just outside of Vancouver, Canada. What you see before you is a, a series of pipes that were cut last night. Picked them up in Vancouver over the weekend. I'll just take this off and uh, give you a, a view. There's two sets of pipes, and this will be for the next testings. Okay, the tall pipe, uh, let's see here. This one here is uh, this one, this one, this one, this one. There's a five set, and that's cut to the uh, uh, Fibonacci or the golden ratio. The diameter of the pipe here is 1.62. So around 1 and 11 sixteenths, right? So what I've done is taken that and multiplied that by uh, 2. So this is just around 3.5 inches. So this is double the golden ratio. And this one here is just under 5. So we call, we're going to call that GR3 golden ratio 3. And this is... Uh, the golden ratio 5, okay, and golden ratio 8, 8 times the inside diameter of the pipe, and of course, this longer pipe, which is 13 times the inside diameter. I did not go with the 21, as uh, I ran out of metal, I had to settle for this, but we got, we got 5 there. And if you calculate the well maybe uh, <clears throat> I should show you how to calculate the the golden ratio and the golden ratio is actually where you take uh, the diameter and mult you know you, you take the diameter and uh, like the golden ratio numbers are 1 2 3 5 8 13 and 21 right so you take one of those numbers any one of those numbers and you multiply it and you get the length of your of your pipe. And uh, uh, one brother up in San Diego, he gave me an email. He kind of turned me on to this actually. His name is Rip from San Diego, and he suggested using the golden ratio. I did think of it before, but he uh, emailed me back a second time. He said, "Well, you need to uh, check into the circumference." Am I losing a pipe here? Well, it's supposed to be. Okay, hang on. I knew I was missing a pipe. I had one set up in there already. Yeah, as you can see, this pipe here is a little bit taller than this one. So, uh, on the second set, what Rip was saying, well, you need to uh, look into the circumference. And uh, the way that you figure out circumference, you take the inside diameter you time that times that by pi or 3.14 so if we take uh, 1.628 times 3.14 you get about 5.01 and as you can see uh, the GR3 and the circumference the length of the circumference is very close it's within a quarter inch or about about 0.22 of an inch and what we're doing here is that in the earlier test done four years ago, before years ago, the spring actually coming up, uh, where I've actually seen the quantum doorway open up to, to produce, well, I would say, at least between one and, and two magnitudes increase of energy, just using you know, water, gas, and, and uh, isopropanol, 99% isopropanol at the time. You know, I, you know, I've seen those kind of reactions take place, and it may be that the uh, golden ratio and the circumference has something to do with it, right? And uh, in the early copper tests using 5 8 copper, you know, looking back, my uh, uh, when I went quantum, and uh, you know, showed the anomalous side, the pipes were around two three inches 
so you know close to the to the circumference and maybe uh, maybe a multiple of the uh, circumference you know but I never seen anything go quantum longer than four inches using a 5 8 pipe so that's what we're doing is back engineering this this belongs there this belongs here this belongs here so this is your uh, GR two three five eight and thirteen and this is your circumference one two and three so this is your five inch double the circumference is ten and three times the circumference is is fifteen so we're going to test out these pipes uh, this here is just more or less uh, uh, some baking aluminum foil what I've done is wrapped it around the the, uh, the pipe here as a filler it's because what I want to, want to do this time is just uh, insert the drill pipe into here right all the way back so you know that uh, none of the propane is going to get out the air and the propane is coming through here and uh, the reason to insulate it is not just to hold the air and the propane in, but it's also to act like a buffer. You don't want metal to metal. And if this whole thing works out, this may be the key to the discovery of opening up the quantum doorway into subspace. And as you know, back in 1953, the Montauk project was perfected. And they, by opening the door to subspace, and in, in back at that time, the uh, US military was able to go anywhere in time and space just check it out you know you can check out L. Bielik's work he was there there's still a few people alive that were from that period and uh, but they we've had been able to do a lot of things that is not reported you know like the Montauk project came out of the Philadelphia experiment and those were real things they were not just something that was fabricated in the past there's lots of proof if you want to search it out but I believe where you know that when you hit the frequency of the universe using it opens up some kind of quantum doorway and that quantum doorway may, may be opening up in, into subspace not in the, into physical space itself but into uh, subspace which is the more or less the, the hologram from which everything is, is taken from. I guess the universal hologram. Okay, uh, going to shut her down here and we're going to set up and start with uh, the GR2 and just going to kind of run through these. Hopefully we can do, be able to do this all in, in about three tests. Okay. <laughs> 